Welcome back to the Wizards Marina. We just got done cruising on the water. It was very fun. Cruising buddies. That's right, baby. <laughs> All right. The boats ran so well, and it got me thinking of some cars that don't run so well. Many of the people in the comment section are always asking what's a bad car to buy. And today we're going to do six cars you should never, ever buy. What are a couple of cars, one or two cars you can think of? You could tell people, just run, don't buy it. Oh, man, I tell you what, uh, I've had a couple, uh, Monte Carlo, an old one that I didn't really like too well, and then uh, I had a Suzuki Sidekick four-door. That thing was just worthless. You couldn't get it on the highway, and it oh, was wow. pretty hard to find parts for it. A little four-cylinder, I think it didn't have nothing but 50 horsepower or something. <laughs> Goodness. But, uh, those are probably my worst. I can find some things wrong with some cars I like, but yeah, uh, yeah, uh, there's a bunch of them out there. So the Suzuki Sidekick and the older, what, probably 80s Monte Carlo? No, it was like a 90. Oh, it was, okay. in the, it was the newer, older version of the newer Monte Carlo, but man, it, it, it was pretty rough. Wow, okay. Well, I've got six I'm going to go over. He's got to take care of some things on his boat and get finished tied off. He's going to go ahead and go take care of that. I'm going to have a seat on my yacht and we're going to talk about it, guys. Let's get started. So we'll let El Capitan get back over to his yacht. He's got some things to take care of today. But I know off the top of my head from experience, six cars or at least groups of cars you guys should just run from, never, never buy. We're living in a weird time where people are buying up cars like crazy and they're buying them for crazy high prices. But regardless of what economic climate we're in, I always get lots of emails. Car Wizard, I'm looking at this car, I'm looking at that car, should I buy this one, should I not buy this one? And like I said, I'm going to give you guys six cars that you don't have to email me about, you can watch this video and know with confidence. I don't care what kind of deal you're getting. These are six groups of vehicles. Do not buy under any circumstance, no matter what kind of good price or deal you're getting. Number one, top of the list, of course, 2004 to 2010, Ford F-150, Expedition, F-250, any of the group of vehicles that Ford sells in these year range with the Ford 5.4 Triton V8, the three valve. The two valves aren't so bad. We're talking about the three valves, which is in this year range. Those of you who have seen my videos before, been watching, keeping up with all my videos, know that I hate these engines. I hate these cars. Not so much because the car itself is such a bad vehicle, the, truck or, the trucks or whatever, but it's what they've done to people. It really aggravates me. It really bothers me. These have cam phaser issues, timing chain issues, and most people, for some reason, do not maintain these very well with oil changes. And always, the engines are always sludged up. Every one that I've ever worked on is sludged up internally. All the, ca all the passages, all the oil passages inside are sludged up, and there's no way to clear all that out. They already have cam phaser issues, and the fix is a brand new engine six to seven thousand dollars if you've watched my worst engine ever which is the 5.4 Ford three valve you will see that I go through a list of 300 shops new engine new engine new engine is literally 30 pages of 300 different shops across the whole country and the guaranteed fix was new engines by the time you're seeing an ad for one, or it's for sale, or they just picked it up at auction, or this or that, it's very likely one of those is going to need a new engine. It has happened so many times, guys. It's over 20 engines I've replaced now at six to $7,000 a pop. Where people say, yeah, I bought it. It was just making this little ticking noise. It ran fine. Don't buy one of these. I'm going to say it one more time because I want you guys to know because I've gotten so many emails. Car Wizard, I'm looking at a 2005 F-150 5.4. You said not to buy these, but this one is such a sweet deal. I don't care. Don't buy it. The next one we're going to get to is a group of cars because they all share the same drivetrains or same problems or transmissions, and that is any and all 
which means all years, Acadia, Enclave, Traverse, Outlook, Equinox, Terrain, all of these. There's, there's several others after that. All of these have the horrible GM 3.6 liter V6 that are used in many different cars and SUVs that GM makes. We all know the timing chain troubles, they rarely ever maintain very well, which kills the timing chain system. It's an engine out job, it's always three, four, five grand, depending on how much damage is done. This is another one of those vehicles that people say, car was a, I'm looking at a few different vehicles, a Toyota, a Honda, and an Acadia. Which one should I buy? And I say, Toyota, no brainer, get the Toyota. And it never fails. They show up a week later in an Acadia because they got a better deal. It was $4,000 cheaper, guys. That's a no-brainer, right? No, it's not a no-brainer. It's a very foolish decision. I just did a video on one of these, and it didn't have timing chain problems, luckily. But it still had a slew of problems. Every person that's bought any of these I just listed has told me later, I should have listened to you, Car Wizard. I absolutely regret my decision of not buying the Toyota. So I'm telling you again, don't buy any of those I just listed. So it's easy for someone to not be mechanically inclined and they say, you know what, I, I know you just mentioned these cars with these engines, but I don't, I don't know if I have this engine or not. One thing you can do is look at your registration or look at your sales when you bought the vehicle. It'll list the engine package usually or list the options. Another thing you can do is pop the hood and find the emissions label. There's a little white label with black writing. And it'll say 5.7 liter or 3.4 liter. It'll say what engine is in that car. And the third thing you can do is actually Google your year and make and model and see what the engine packages were listed in that car. You could look at images or Google pictures of the engines available and see if it matches the one you have, if it looks similar. That's one way you can tell if you have that engine. And lastly, a way that you can look it up is through the VIN number. You can just type in the VIN number, but I believe it's the tenth digit in the VIN is the engine identifier. You can see exactly what engine is in your car. If it's any of these I've listed that were bad and you're looking to buy this vehicle, don't buy it. The next group of cars really doesn't narrow or focus on any brand or make. It would be any European car with over 150,000 miles. I don't care if it's a Mini Cooper, a Mercedes, a BMW, a Land Rover, a Jaguar, all of them. Because it frequently drains people's bank accounts. When they get this many miles on them, they will never be finished being fixed. You'll never reach that point where you say, I got everything fixed, I'm good for a while. You will never be good for a while. It will be constant, one to two to three thousand repairs every three to six months. There is a slew of these cars with high miles for sale. They're really cheap. These cars might have been fifty, seventy-five, hundred thousand dollar cars when they were new, and now they're only five thousand dollars. You say, boy, that's a bargain. No, it's not. There's a reason why it's so cheap. Because people who have money that bought those cars new, they know better. They're like, oh hell no, I don't want one of those cars. It'll cost more than I paid to buy it to keep the repairs up to date and keep everything maintained. It's very easy to buy one of these for five grand and put 10 grand in repairs in it over five years. It is not a wise financial decision. These cars can literally break your bank and they're not fun. They're fun for the first few weeks, but after that, and you're like, this was a, this was a mistake. This is costing way too much money. Don't buy one of those guys. The next recommendation I have is not necessarily a car, but is a group of engines, which any car with this engine, which is tons of them, is any General Motors vehicle with a 3.1 or the 3.4 V6. I myself have repaired a lot of these as well. They really only have head gasket or intake manifold issues that leak coolant into the oil and ruin the engine. And if this is caught ahead of time, or if they're maintained well, it's actually not that bad of an engine. But there's the key thing that I just mentioned, maintained very well. These 3.1s and 3.4s are the most abused engine I've ever seen in my life. 
They usually purchase by someone they're really cheap and they're someone that has no interest in maintenance whatsoever and they drive it until the wheels fall off. They don't even do oil changes. They do nothing, they just drive it. And it always comes to the intake gasket leak. It's been leaking a little bit like that for a year. I've just been nursing it along. Now I need to get it fixed. And I'm like, you can't get it fixed. It's ruined. The bearings inside the motor have gotten water on them. It's so easy with these cars to financially total it with the intake gasket leak. Because if the engine shot, even if you put a salvage yard motor in, by the time you pay for labor and the motor, even if it's two or three thousand dollars, which is cheaper than a new engine, which is eight or ten, you still have spent more than you spent on the car. Most of these cars that have these are worth fifteen hundred, two grand. One of the things you can do if you're looking to buy one of these is check the coolant reservoir, make sure there's not gunky oil inside of it. Check the oil dipstick, make sure it's not got water or milky looking oil in it and go drive it make sure it doesn't overheat or make sure there's no issues with oil pressure or anything like that but it's not really something you can see that easy you just have to to drive it and kind of know what you're looking at but check the oil for sure because if it's milky like chocolate milk don't buy it in fact don't buy them at all they're that bad the next group of vehicles is also vehicles based on an engine package is any truck or SUV that has AFM or MDS, which is multi-displacement system or active fuel management. These would be the 5.7 or the 6.4 Hemis with MDS. This can also be the 5.3 or the 6.0 Max Vortec that have active fuel management. What these have is lifters that can turn themselves on and off to shut down cylinders, which is oil pressure operated. Regardless if it's Chrysler Corporation or General Motors, these things fail like crazy. They drop like flies. It's, re it's really sad because on an older engine, you could pull a cam out and do a cam change and change a valve train without a major teardown. But both the Hemi and the Vortec engines require the heads to come off. There's no way around it. You're not getting the cam out without pulling the heads off. I've actually told people this doing estimates and they're like, car wizard, the heads don't have to come off. I'm like, okay, you find a way to do that and I'll give you a hundred grand. These lifters have little rollers on them that roll on the camshaft. And what can happen is they can actually turn sideways, it's no longer rolling properly. And it can just destroy the camshaft, destroy the lifters, and in worst case scenario can actually break the engine block. It can the bores where the lifters sit, it can actually crack and break them. It causes so much damage. One of the telltale signs is this, a squeaking or a ticking while it's running, like yeah, 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 on the on the Hemis, or on the Chevys, you'll just hear tuk, 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 like a like a ticking noise. Every time I've done these jobs, it's three to five thousand dollars, just because, like I said, the heads have to come off. Now there is AFM or MDS delete, so say car wizard, all you have to do is delete it and you're done. But what does that do for the prior damage before you purchase the vehicle? Because it is known for these rollers on the lifters to score the cam lobes. And maybe it may not be a problem for another year or two, but just because you deleted the AFM or MDS doesn't mean that that now is also gone. It's not. You can still have rollers go bad on these and guess what? heads are coming off. Don't, don't buy these guys, they're just not worth it. And the last one I have is any of the early 2000 Subarus. We all know they have head gasket issues, we all know they blow head gaskets, it's kind of a running joke. The cars themselves are actually decent cars, they're really a decent engine if you take care of the head gasket issue. But when it is time to get that done, it's two to four grand, it's an engine out job, and it's very, very expensive. Here's the real crazy thing though. It's easy to think that there's not, there's not that many of those left out there that have blown head gaskets or going to blow. They've all been fixed by now or either they're in the junkyard. But that's not true. It never fails when I have a friend or a family member say, I just bought a Subaru and it's got a blown head gasket. That happens so many times. It's like, how do people that I know keep ending up with these with blown head gaskets? There's a lot of them still out there. 
They're just barely getting by. They've been nursing it by. You go buy it, and it finally, six months later, it blows completely. One of the things you can check on these is there's not a lot of stop leak put in the coolant reservoir. You can actually smell it. It smells really bad. It'll be brown or gray gunk all in the reservoir. Another thing you can tell is if you go to drive it, it overheats really fast. Also turn on the heater. If you turn on the heat and there's no heat coming from the heat at all, that's a very good sign that the head gaskets are blown. I agree with you guys. You say, Wizard, there's not that many of those out there, but I keep running into them. I get fans or customers. I just bought one of these. It's got a blown head gasket. It just keeps happening, guys. They made millions of these, so there's a lot left out there. Don't buy one of the early 2000 Subarus unless it's had documented that the head gasket issue has been solved by a reputable shop. If there's no documentation, no records, don't buy it. It'll save you a lot of money. So hopefully this will help you guys out if you're in the market. A lot of people are in the market right now. And you're looking to buy a car, watch this video and make wise decisions. Don't buy any of the things that I've just listed. And if you do buy them, don't come crying to me and say, I bought one of these you said not to buy and now I'm stuck, what do I do? You shouldn't have bought it. So while we were out cruising today with El Capitan, it kind of came to mind. I was thinking about all the cars that are selling right now for really high prices and I got to thinking there's so many out there that people shouldn't buy. I need to do a video to tell you guys these are the ones do not buy. No matter what good deal you get, just don't buy them. So if you're curious what kind of tools we use in the shop to fix the vehicles that I just talked about, check my Amazon affiliates link in the description below. We'll get a small cut and we appreciate it. And make sure you hit the subscribe button because we got many more cool videos to come. Thanks for watching.